Speaker's Introduction to Comenius the Latin and Greek Videos John Amos Comenius was a Protestant theologian and educator, born in 1592 in Moravia, which is now part of the Czech Republic. He died in 1670 in Amsterdam, having been forced to live in exile from his native land for much of his adult life because of the religious wars of the time. Comenius wrote several Latin textbooks that were enormously popular across Europe for several centuries, in particular the Janua Linguarum Reserata, that is, the Gateway to Languages Opened, and the Orbis Sensualium Pictus, the World of Perceptible Things Illustrated. The purpose of these two books was to teach young students about the world itself and to name the objects of this world in the student's native language and in Latin. Therefore, as intended, the Yanoa and the Orbis Pictus were translated into many contemporary languages, English, French, German, etc. Comenius neatly organized the subject matter of these textbooks into exactly 100 hierarchically ordered topics, starting with creation and the cosmos and the classical four elements, earth, water, air, and fire, and moving on to plants, animals, and finally man, his body, his familial relationships, his arts, crafts, and occupations, his culture and institutions, his mores. While naturally some of their content is to us stylistically old-fashioned and out of date scientifically, they are still an extremely valuable goldmine of Latin vocabulary contextualized across the major compartments of life. For those learning Greek as well as Latin, the Yanoa and the Orbis have the double benefit of having been translated during Comenius's lifetime into ancient Greek. So they also serve as a goldmine of Greek vocabulary and of Latin Greek equivalents. Or, the Yanoa and the Orbis would be valuable today for learning Latin and Greek vocabulary if they were easily accessible, that is, in media and in fonts that we're comfortable with in the 21st century, which they aren't or weren't, but are now thanks to Felipe Fogel and to Stephen Hill. Felipe has transcribed the entire Yanoa, Latin and Greek, into Microsoft Word and Stephen has done the same for the entire Orbis Pictus, both monumental achievements. A shout out also goes to Roberto Lionello for proofreading and helping explicate these texts, and of course to Evan Milner for his Latin recording several years ago of the entire Orbis Pictus, which acquainted many of us with Comenius in the first place. My name is Randy Gibbons, and I am also working on a Word document, I call it the Master Document, that with their permission combines Felipe and Stephen's Yanoa and Orbis transcriptions and adds two things. First, vowel length indicators, that is, macrons and brevs, to both the Latin and the Greek. I strongly believe all Latin and Greek learning materials should show these, they are an indispensable part of developing correct pronunciation habits and of learning the correct roots of words, and they facilitate a full appreciation of Latin and Greek poetry whose meters are based on vowel quantity. Second, I am adding commentary to the Comanian text and explanations for the occasional changes to the Greek translation, hopefully improvements, which I have taken the liberty of making. The current version of my master Word document is always available on Dropbox and linked to on my blog. But now to this YouTube video project. The intention is to make Comenius even more accessible and useful. Let's face it, even in a modern medium and legible font, the Yanoa and the Orbis are sometimes old-fashioned, are sometimes out of date scientifically, and some of their sentences, not many, but some, are obscure. For example, in his topic on stones in the Yanoa de la Pidibus, Comenius asserts the medicinal value of two stones he calls the bezoar and the deer's tear. Definitely obscure, and definitely what we would now call quackery. So, we explain. 
Or take, for example, the pictures in the Orbis Pictus. The reason the Orbis Pictus is Pictus is because, and this was a genuine innovation on his part, Comenius accompanied the text with engraved pictures, with numbers cross-referencing the objects in the picture with the words in the text. But hey, we've got the internet. So here's what we've done instead. And I'll just read the Latin, not the Greek. Caelum habet ignem, lucem, et stellas, nubes pendent in aere, aves volant sub nubibus. Pisces natant in aqua. Finally, what about when Comenius is significantly out of date scientifically? For example, when he presents a Ptolemaic geocentric view of the cosmos. The vocabulary, the names of the planets, the constellations, the associated gods and goddesses is still valid. So why not use the anachronism as a teaching opportunity about antiquity, about Comenius's era, or our own? Since, after all, the intention of these books was to teach about the world itself, we have occasionally updated their encyclopedic value as with these informational slides about the epical transition from geocentric to heliocentric astronomy that occurred under Comenius's very nose. In sum, the five somewhat unique things we are doing with these YouTube videos are combining the Yanoa and the Orbis, since these are just different versions of the same topics and thus reinforce one another, reading both the Latin and the Greek. The target audience is those learning both languages, though if, for example, you're learning Latin but think you want to learn Greek or vice versa, you should still find these recordings useful. Members of the target audience, by the way, may be 15 years old. They may be 65 years old. Providing an abundance of contemporary pictures and occasionally sound with the same intention as Comenius to help learn words and statements by association with pictures and sounds. Adding explanatory or supplemental information, sometimes about antiquity, sometimes about Comenius's era, sometimes about our own. And finally, trying our best to make it fun, with no apologies for the occasional irreverence. All right, what the hell are you saying? That's Latin, Dad. The language of Plutarch. Mickey Mouse's dog? For each video, we are also providing additional resources. You will find a link in the YouTube description to a Dropbox folder containing a copy of the PowerPoint used to make the video. Note that credits for the pictures are given at the back of the PowerPoint, though not included in the video. A Word document with the text of the Latin and Greek recorded in the video, cut out of the master Word document and retaining the vowel length markings, but with the miscellaneous notes of the master document removed. Note that in order to eliminate visual clutter, the Latin and Greek text in the PowerPoint and video do not have the vowel length diacritics, so you need to get these from this Word document or the master Word document. And also an MP3 file with just the audio portion of the recording and with everything stripped out but the Latin and the Greek. We've organized the videos by logical topic subgroupings, for example, introduction, the beginnings, the elements, plants, animals, etc. These subgroupings are also represented as playlists on YouTube. You may be viewing this video right now individually or as part of the Comenius Latin and Greek Introduction playlist. The Yanoa and the Orbis Pictus are a rich source of Latin and for our purposes Greek vocabulary not just in quantity of words, but in organization and approach. Organizationally, Comenius distributed the vocabulary across 100 topics, 
arranged by Comenius and subgrouped by ourselves into what look like links in the great chain of being, the cosmos, air, wind, fire, and earth, plants, animals, man. Technically, of course, man is higher on the chain than plants and animals, but Comenius saves man for last. In other words, the vocabulary in the Yanawa and the Orbis is given in a meaningful progression and in meaningful contexts. In terms of approach, the words of interest, mostly but by no means exclusively nouns, because the Yanawa and Orbis are all about naming things, are given in carefully crafted short, grammatically simple sentences that communicate something about these things. In the terminology of current foreign language pedagogy, each sentence is a bite-sized piece of comprehensible input. Take this sentence as an example from the Yanua topic de meteoris on weather. Pluvia de stilat lente. Imber dense. Nimbus impetuose. We learn from this sentence that pluvia, imber, and nimbus signify rainfalls of increasing intensity. Something meaningful has been communicated. So here is a recommendation for how you can most benefit from these videos. For each video, give it an initial viewing beginning to end to familiarize yourself with its overall scope without trying to memorize anything yet. Repeat the viewing a second time using the pause button so you can absorb the entire content of each slide or at least as much as is of interest to you. Repeat the viewing a third time, this time with the slide on pause, Drill in on each Latin and or Greek sentence. Are you confident you understand its meaning? What was Comenius trying to communicate with the sentence? If you are going from the Latin to the Greek, does the Greek reasonably translate the Latin? Remember, not all translations can be or are exactly the same in construction, and word equivalences are often only approximate. Nevertheless, the Greek should convey the same essential meaning as the Latin. Take our rain sentence, for example. Hohuitos erema, ombros pugnoteron stalazde, lailaps etupos kataigidodes ka ragdaiosestim. The construction of the Greek sentence is slightly different. It consists of two independent clauses. The translator is obliged to duplicate the concept of increasing intensity of rainfall but you may suspect that in actual Greek usage, huetos, ombros, and lailaps, or tupos, don't have the same linear progression of intensity as pluvia, imber, and nimbus. And a lailaps, or tupos, is really much more violent than a nimbus. If you are translating from the Greek to Latin, you'd probably translate lailaps, or tupos, as prokela, or turbo. Nevertheless, the Greek reasonably translates the meaning of the Latin and provides us with Greek words for rain and rainstorms. Say each sentence out loud. Has the speaker used the right pauses and emphasized the right words to best communicate the intended meaning? See if you can improve upon the speaker. In most cases, that shouldn't be hard. Once the video's bells and whistles have served their purpose, do a repeated listening of the MP3, which again is stripped of everything but the Latin and the Greek. By the way, these audios can easily be edited with free software such as Audacity if, for example, you wanted to take out either the Latin or the Greek. Do your best to memorize each sentence. Try to perfect your articulation of it, always out loud. Real vocabulary acquisition comes from oral and oral repetition of meaningful content. Finally, mail a cash envelope, a money order, or a certified check to the speaker. Also do this repeatedly. Let me end with two observations about the first video in this series called Comanius Introduction. Comenius in these introductory topics is trying to pump up his young students. With the minor and amusing exception of the alphabet, he isn't really naming anything, which is the meat and potatoes of the Yanoa and the Orbis. So stay tuned, the good stuff follows. Second, 
If you read just the opening and closing topics of the Orbis Pictus, or the closing sentences of the Yanua, you may be misled into thinking that these textbooks are laden with a heavy dose of 17th century Christian theology. That is not true at all. In fact, in the handful of topics on religion as a human institution near the end of the Orbis, the topics include not only Christianity, but paganism, Judaism, and Islam.